Hey guys, coming to you from my house under construction where, of course, like everything, I've gone to the extreme. Now in this video, I wanna to talk to you about what I've done for water protection at my washing machine, my dishwasher, and my fridge. What I've done was I've made a pan, an overflow pan, for all three of those locations. Now one of these pans does not have a drain, two of them do. On today's build show, I'm gonna show you all the details. I think this is really straightforward and can provide a lot of protection for your appliances. Today's build show from my house, let's get going. All right, so here's the deal. In my 25 years of owning different houses, I've had some water leaks in the past, and mainly it's been washer, uh, washing machine overflows. That's actually happened to me twice. But I've seen other issues in houses that I've uh, remodeled or built. And of course, if you look at the stats from the like insurance agency, flood remediation is a multi, multi-million dollar industry every year. So if we can take uh, a couple ounces of prevention, totally worth the cure. So here's what we've got. Dishwashers. Now I'm using a Miele dishwasher that has all kinds of extra protection from a leak and from water overflowing. But what if someday I move out and someone moves in with a different washer? I wanted to put a drain pan in. I also am extra cautious at this house because I've got an insulated subfloor detail. So I'm on slab, then I've got insulation, then I've got subfloor, and then these beautiful hardwoods and I don't want any water on these hardwoods and I certainly don't want any water underneath them. So for my dishwasher, this is my location for my dishwasher. See that drain that's coming up through the hardwoods? That's a one and a half inch PVC pipe that we actually put in during the uh, early construction phases. This is a remodel, so we jackhammered the slab, I saw cut it, jackhammered it out and put that pipe in with a P-trap and that pipe is not connected to my sewer system, it simply runs to the outside. P-traps are good because they're gonna seal out both air and bugs from coming back into the house, but we wanna make sure our P-traps are not just filled with water, especially in a location like this because that water could easily dry out. So anytime we have a P-trap that doesn't have what they call a trap primer, we wanna put something like this in. This is mineral oil, you can get this at uh, you know, the grocery store, but this mineral oil won't dry out, it won't go rancid like some kind of kitchen oil will, and it's gonna stay there forever. So this is a great choice to pour in that P-trap. We're gonna simply pour that in that P-trap. But I wanted to make sure that any water that got there actually made it to that hole. So here's what I did. There was a couple options I thought about. I actually thought about using uh, Schluter's Curdy band. They make a waterproofing membrane for showers that could go on top of uh, sheetrock, could go on top of cement backer board, that sort of thing, it's very thin. But in the end, I decided to just go ahead and make a pan. Now this happens to be stainless, but galvanized would have worked just fine. And all we've got here is a pan with upturned corners. This is about a half inch upturn all the way around. And then I had the maker of this, this came from Capital Company uh, here in Austin. They just custom fabricated it to my template. It has a one inch outlet. And I made it such that that one inch outlet will fit actually directly in this location. Come around, let's actually install this as we're thinking about it. And originally I thought about cutting out my hardwoods to put this pan in, but I've got a little taller countertop than normal. Uh, let's see, am I putting this in the right way? Yes, I am, it lines up. And because I've got a little taller countertop, I'm actually gonna to have to put some runners on top of this and bring my dishwasher up. My top of countertop height is 38 inches, below is 37, and most of the time dishwashers fit into like a 34 inch space. So I'm gonna have an extra gap. What I'm gonna do is bring my dishwasher up on some runners. I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm simply gonna drop this pan into place, if I can get it in. It's nice and tight, which is good. Okay, there we go. Now you can see I brought the pan back a little bit from the front so that it won't show and my dishwasher will come down here. And I could just leave it as is. And remember, I've got mineral oil in that trap, so that's gonna keep that out. But I thought for a little extra precaution, I would take some zip tape and actually take this lip 
and use some zip tape. This is a flashing tape we would use on the outside. It's acrylic based, uh, so it's got a really good long-term adhesive. And I'm simply gonna tape this to my cabinets on both sides, and I'm gonna tape it to the back wall. That way if something were to kind of spurt out the back, uh, it would actually hit the wall, run down, and go down my pan. So that's gonna protect me at the dishwasher. And when you do a dishwasher and you got an actual drain, you want an upturned front on there to capture that water and send it down the drain. Okay guys, flashing tape is on there. The last step uh, is this. I made some runners. Actually, Jorge made me some runners. This is uh, Versatec material. Five quarter, meaning it's actually one inch thick. So this is two inch total thickness with two layers. And we dadoed out the bottom so that when these go in and the dishwasher rides on these, uh, these will allow water. So if water got here, it could run through those dados and down the drain. And once I figure out the exact width, I'll put just a bead of uh, sealant just to lock this in place so it doesn't vibrate. So the dishwasher's raised two inches and then the Mila can adjust upwards uh, to an inch and a half. So that will raise it up. And then what's cool about the Mila is they don't fasten to the countertop. This unit actually installs uh, with screws on the side and there's a plug. So we've got a screw there and a screw there. And you can see this is the, the seal for the door. So this is in front of that. And then my dishwasher will come all the way up and cinch up tight to the countertop. So now my taller than average counter is at 38 are still gonna work perfect with my dishwasher. Great job, Mila, for having a very adjustable, very nice product. And if you've never used one of the dishwashers, these things are absolutely amazing. Just top of the line. Washer dishes like nothing else I've ever experienced. Very, very nice. My fridge and freezer, I did not put a drain in. You don't hear about those leaking quite as often. I've, not, I've never actually experienced that but I am concerned about the water line connection in the back, maybe having a couple drips come out of it, or sometimes maybe even some condensation happening underneath that fridge. So I wanted to protect my hardwoods. And again, I don't want run any water running behind the hardwoods. So here's what I did in this case. We just did a stainless pan that has three sides, nothing on the front, a, a side and a back leg right here that are all a half inch and we're simply gonna place this in the location. Now it's really critical to make sure that it's not gonna interfere, interfere with your um, outlets or plugs if you've got appliances. For instance, I've got a built-in Mila freezer, pardon me, freezer and fridge here, and their outlets need to be very low on those appliances so you could reach in and unplug them. So what I did was I made that back leg high enough that it would stop water from running back, but not so high that it would interfere with my plugs. If you didn't have plugs back there, you could certainly go higher. But again, I didn't need that. I really just wanted to kick forward. I also like that this goes really the entire full width. So it's not gonna interfere with the appliance rolling in or out. And then I've got this front here that doesn't have a lip. And the reason being is there's no drain through the slab in this location. So I wanted that water to kick out. So if I'm in the kitchen, and I see a puddle right here. Oh, I can go, oh, I got a problem. I got to shut that off. And you can see the side right here of my shut off, but I actually have a shut off for that um, water line in this cabinet. If you look there, you can see that. And that would actually uh, shut the water off going to that fridge. So there's my quarter turn shut off valve right there. Uh, connected to my Upinor plumbing system in the house. I don't expect that to leak, but again, it's really the connection, that braided stainless line that I'm worried about having a problem at some point in the future. Again, we're gonna zip tape this on the sides, and then just as importantly, we're gonna zip tape where this flat lip goes down from the pan to the hardwoods. I'm gonna run it about an inch or maybe an inch and a half onto the hardwoods, not so much that I can see it, but enough that it'll keep water from running back underneath the pan if water were to come out. So, I also have one of these going on in my washing machine area, which is right over here. And let's walk over and see this one real quick. So in the washing machine area, same exact idea, except I have hardwoods in this space. And so in this case, I actually sunk the pan down. I took my hardwoods out from the location where the washer and dryer, this is a stacked uh, Mila unit going in here. 
and I sunk the pan down. Same exact setup, P-trap, mineral oil that's going to the outside. We're in good shape there. And I'm gonna tape this on the sides as well so water would come down, but this should keep us uh, in good shape to make sure that if there were some water that came out, if a hose burst someday, it would take care of the majority of the water. All right, so now that you've seen what I've done here, <laughs> let me tell you about one way that I think I probably would upgrade this system if I do this again. I always like belt and suspenders, and if I could do this all over again, I didn't find out about this product until uh, after I'd already put my drains in, which was, gosh, at this point, like nine months ago. But this is called Drain Seal. Odie makes this. Uh, you're probably familiar with them. They make all kinds of uh, plumbing products. And this is a product that could be used to retrofit if you had a sewer gas smell or an insect issue getting through your trap. But this would be a really nice belt and suspender. It's called Drain Seal. The smallest size they make currently is two inch, so this wouldn't have fit my inch and a half drain, but this would have been really nice. What this is, is it's, it's a rubber gasket that's just flexible enough that if water were to go down the drain, you can see it's got some ribs in there, so it would actually fit into a two inch pipe. And then I could have put my uh, nipple on my pan straight in there. But because this is flexible enough, water would get through, but you can see the mouth would close up afterwards and seal off trap gas, seal off insects, that sort of thing. This would be a really nice belt and suspenders. If I were to do it again, I would have put a two inch drain in, I'd put one of these in, and I think they make these maybe in another size as well. I'd have to double check. I'll put a link in the description for these. I think they make this either in a two and a half or maybe a three inch version as well. But guys, that's it. I mean, with a little bit of ounce of prevention, Gosh, we could prevent multiple thousands of dollars in damage and the headaches that come along with floods. Check out my other videos, upstairs in my kids' bathrooms, for instance, on my second floor above us here, I put in drains in the floor uh, so that in my daughter's bathroom, if she ever overflowed her shower or her toilet, that would drain into a floor drain and there's a marble threshold on the tile to make sure that I've got a lip there. In my boys' bathroom, I've got one by their toilet. And in my upstairs laundry room, again, I've got a drain in that space in the floor. But in this slab on grade situation, I think this is gonna work really well. And again, these are not connected to my plumbing system here. Uh, these just have those P-traps and the drains go right to the outside. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got lots of nerdy videos like this. I do all kinds of interesting things here on The Build Show. And I publish every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.